So I've gotten a bunch of questions in the comments of my porting SFM model Splendor tutorial, so I thought I'd make a follow-up video explaining some things. Also, I'm going to preface this by saying you do need a basic understanding of Blender and how the node graph works. That out of the way, let's answer some questions. In the last video, Blender 4.2 was releasing while I was making it, and they changed how add-ons work, so I hastily threw together an Ace Attorney meme to explain how to install a local add-on. Well, now that we're on Blender version 4.5, I think I should do a proper explanation. If you want to add an add-on that's not on Blender's extension platform, go to Edit, Preferences, then Add-ons. If you're on Blender 4.2 or later, there should be a little drop-down underneath the X. Click it, then install from local disk, then install the add-on. What's cool is it will not only search it for you in the search box, but it will also enable it so you don't need to do it yourself. Now for the big one. A lot of people have been asking about certain textures breaking, and even though I explained it in the original video, I didn't do it quite as well as I could have. So here's a better explanation on how you fix source IO not importing the textures correctly. First, go to the shader graph of a material that did load properly and copy the texture name. A quick way to do this is by hovering over the file name of the image texture and pressing C. This also works for other typable fields. Paste the name you copied into everything's search bar. Check the previous video if you want to know more about everything. Right click and select Open Path then copy the file path into the file browser. Now here's where things get challenging. Go to Blender and under the Source Engine Assets tab, select Source Texture VTF. On the file pop-up, paste in the path you copied, select everything, and click Import. Then go to one of the broken materials and set up the shader like you would any other material. You're going to need to add in a material output node if your graph is completely blank. If you're unsure, press A and then numpad period. If nothing happens, you have a blank graph. Next, add the image texture node and pick the most fitting one. Rinse and repeat for all the broken materials. Since Pomni has multiple different eye textures included, you're going to need to set up some drivers and node trickery. Here's a small scale example that you can expand out to include as many textures as you want. For those wondering, yes, we can import Gmod add-ons into Blender as well. What's cool is Gmod gives us everything we need to use right out of the box, except for potentially one thing. First, go to wherever you install Gmod, then go to the Gary's Mod folder. Then create a folder called Add-ons if there isn't one there already. Then go to the workshop page of whatever item you want to port, copy its ID, that's a string of numbers in the URL, then paste it into everything. If you're using the Steam app instead of the Steam website, it copies the whole URL when you click on it, just delete everything but the ID in everything search bar. You should see a folder that matches the ID. Open it. You'll see a .gma file. This is the add-on. Next, search gmad.exe in everything. Then drag the .gma file onto gmad. Let it do its thing, and then a folder that shares the name of your .gma file will appear. In the folder, you'll find the models and materials set up like they would be in SFM. The porting process is exactly the same for any other SFM model. In this case, it's even easier to fix any texture errors because the model and materials are isolated in the same folder. Some models import with really small bones. To fix this, select the skeleton in the outliner and tab into edit mode. Then select all the bones and with the transform set to individual origins, press S and type in a large number until they're visible. If they're slightly too big or small, confirm the scale, then scale again, but drag using the mouse to scale them. Do this to taste. While you're here, it's a good idea to check the axis of any bones. Turn on the axis view for the bones in the viewport visibility properties, and then align any bones that aren't. Like, all the fingers should rotate on the same axis. Same with the arms and the legs, etc, etc, etc. I've gotten a few questions regarding rigging the characters post-import. The only problem is, the auto-rigging framework I use, fittingly named Auto-Rig Pro, costs a little less than $70. Now it's 100% worth it, and if you're serious about pursuing 3D animation and have the money for it, do it. I'll leave a link in the description. Luckily, Blender has two inbuilt auto-rigging add-ons that are 100% free. They're called Rigify and Cloud Rig, that I don't know how to use. Luckily, there's a really good and thorough tutorial for Rigify on the CG Dive YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description. He also has a series on manual rigging if you want to take the plunge and make your own rigs from scratch. 
Alternatively, if you want to use CloudRig, I'll leave Blender's own documentation for it, as well as the extension page in the description below. Be warned though, neither of these auto riggers have conversion tools, meaning there's no way to easily convert skeletons to rigs automatically. So if you use either of these, prepare to do some weight painting. That should cover all the big questions I got. If you have any more, leave them in the comments below. Huge thank you to my supporter plus members scrolling by. If you want to support what I do, join the membership. You get a badge by your name and you get to see all my videos a day early, plus an exclusive channel in my Discord. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.